African Innovators. Hello and welcome to your favorite African-themed content channel, Africa Revealed. Disability is not inability. It is not our making as humans to be born with disabilities, but since it still happens and people are born with disabilities, many innovators have invested a lot of work hours to make the lives of these individuals simpler. Prosthetic limbs are created to allow impaired persons to go about their daily lives without difficulty, just like everyone else does. However, as technology advances, these prostheses are being designed in such a manner that they may be programmed and work similarly to a natural body part, yet they are still man-made. These prostheses have a reputation for being prohibitively costly and unavailable in several impoverished nations, leaving no options to people living with disabilities from these countries to import them. However, you may not be aware that a Kenya Innovators duo has developed technology that will help in the future creation of prostheses. In today's video, we'll discuss an innovation that is both impressive and most likely ahead of its time. So that you can acquire all of the information regarding this amazing piece of technology, don't move a muscle until the conclusion of this video, so sit back, relax and enjoy. If you like this type of content, you can help the channel by subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. Let's get started without further ado. David Gatu and Moses Kinyua, two Kenyan inventors, have developed a biorobotic prosthetic limb. This isn't a brand new innovation, yet there is something unique about it making it worth the attention. Brain impulses are used to control the arm's movement. Yes, the arm is controlled by brain impulses and was developed in Kenya, not Silicon Valley or other tech powerhouses such as China and Japan. The tale behind the development of the bioprosthetic limb is fascinating, as it exemplifies the saying, one man's trash is another man's gold. Technology evolves at breakneck speeds that might be difficult to keep up with. A computer, phone or other electronic device that were formerly very powerful may no longer be usable after some years. To certify the statement, the majority of us would replace a gadget, let's say a computer and laptop that has been in use for 2 or 3 years, with a new one because the old one has become obsolete or no longer fits your requirements because it is slow or it cannot handle current software. With that in mind, it should come as no surprise that there will be a significant amount of electric waste accumulating around us due to this rapid replacement. Electronic trash becomes difficult to handle and recycle, particularly in developing countries like Kenya, where such waste is not recycled but shipped to other countries with recycling facilities. But not for David Gatu and Moses Kinyua, the creators of a homemade bioprosthetic limb that reacts to brain impulses. The two collected the electronic waste that they came across and used that to make bioprosthetic arms. In contrast to the benefits, the worldwide pandemic had a lot of drawbacks. Many things were impacted, most notably global economics. It has however increased the speed of automation technologies, e-commerce and technology corporations domination. On the other side, it has posed a threat to and altered the status quo. Leadership that is proactive and adaptable is required for resilience. Most successful businesses place innovation at the heart of their operations. It is during this time that the duo managed to make the prosthetic arm a success. Online learning resources are very helpful when it comes to people doing their research. The duo can, without doubt, confirm the sign. Their innovation heavily depends on the resources available on the internet. On the other hand, Kenya has some of the strongest internet coverage and overall technological infrastructure in Africa as well as the world. Kenya is also a major supplier of talent as seen by the large number of technology businesses that have established regional headquarters in Kenya to tap into the talent pool. This gives the nation a fantastic chance to strengthen its position and establish itself as a vital innovation and technology center. The enormity and complexity of technology revolution promises possibilities and hazards that governments throughout the world contend with as they try to comprehend its economic implications. With billions of people linked by mobile devices with unparalleled processing power, storage capacity and access to information, the fast expansion in access to mobile devices and internet connection opens the door to vast levels of interconnectivity. Also, it offers a platform that can be used to learn and gain the necessary skills to make an invention just like Kinua and Gatu. Artificial intelligence, robots, the internet of things and 3D printing among other emerging technologies are expected to amplify the consequences of this new phenomenon. Companies have to rethink their business strategies due to the transition from basic digitization to innovation based on a mix of technology. Kenya has also embraced the notion of innovation centers, with various investors giving facilities for innovators to test and develop their concepts. The tech structure on research and development activities which are at the heart of innovations needs to be reviewed. This will guarantee that ideas are fostered and pushed out internationally. 
With all of these resources at their disposal, David Gatu, 29, and Moses Kinyua, 29, refused to allow the high school expenses that caused them to drop out of college to prevent them from pursuing their ambition of helping their communities by making a bioprosthetic arm execute actions just like a normal arm. Using the internet and any learning materials they could find, the two created a bioprosthetic arm that is controlled only by brain impulses. From their workshop in Kiambu County, Kikuyu, Kenya, north of the capital Nairobi, the two created the arm. When we talk about a workshop, you'd think that this one would meet all of your expectations for a world-class workshop since it's where a futuristic piece of the invention was born. But don't be astonished to hear that the workshop isn't even near to that nut, being only a plain framework. The workshop consists of a shack constructed of rusty iron sheets that stands adjacent to a chicken coop. The shop's floor is covered with gravel, so the ground outside and the ground inside are almost indistinguishable. The window frame fits brown shattered glass with tape all around it to hold it in place. When a strong wind blows, Kinyua says the structure shakes, but they mend the worn out iron sheets that make up the roof regularly to guarantee that no rainfall spills into their treasure trove. The interior of the dilapidated shed resembles a scene from a science fiction film. It would be hard to believe that this innovation was born here, but yes, it was all made from here. Any individual with an interest in electronics will find the view in the workshop to be quite gratifying. Everything is well organized with warning symbols dotting the boxes of precious equipment, some of which the young inventors claim has never been seen by human eyes other than their own. A robotic arm emerges from one of the boxes present in the room, looking like a costume that might be or has been seen in one of the numerous Marvel or Star Wars films. It looks just like a prop that a master would use to show off to a secret agent in a spy film. The arm features a helmet and straps to connect to someone's body, with a golden metallic finish and hues of black. To control the gadget, you have to wear a helmet. So once you wear this helmet, brain signals will be received and sent to the arm, Kinyo explained. The brain signals will be converted into an electrical current which is known as a neural knot, which will then go all the way to the hand and tell it what to do, he added. Donning the robotic arm himself, he powered it on saying, I want to reach out to that bottle and drink water from it. But then I'm acting as if I don't have an arm. Look what happens. After a few beeps and some mechanical noises, the robotic arm got the command and immediately executed the task ordered. See, it reaches for the bottle and catches it, he said. It doesn't end there. I want to drink from it. So I think it and... He paused as the arm poured water from the bottle into his mouth. A true technological marvel. The main reason we came up with this is to help people in our community who have lost their limbs. We don't want these people to feel like they can't do anything, we want them to be dependent on themselves. Not just drinking water, but the arm can do many more tasks. They say they are still perfecting the device, but lack of funds has been a challenge. David Matenge from the Association of the Physically Disabled of Kenya, APDK, a charity NGO says, such inventions are the future of the science of artificial limbs. This is the science we need to ease the challenges people with disabilities face. The young Kenyans use rudimentary material that has been thrown away to make their inventions come to life. People throw away a lot of things that are harmful to the environment just because they don't work. If they don't work, it might be just one component that's faulty but all the other components still work and can be recycled, Katu said. We've recycled everything that you see here. They throw it away, we pick it up and use it. This has saved us from spending a lot of money because we are not backed up financially by anyone to come up with our inventions. They pick up junk that people throw away. Things like plastic, rubber, wiring, old computer motherboards, LED lights, USB devices, switches, optical drives, heat sinks, fans, and power supply units. Components that they say could be quite expensive to purchase new from a shop. Hence, opt to use the already thrown away readily available pieces. Kenya has historically benefited from such technological leftovers which are donated from wealthy countries. These devices, however, do not last long, resulting in an avalanche of electrical debris that pollutes the environment. The pair feels that their ideas are also assisting in the fight against e-waste, which is true since they are reusing these wastes. Other ideas are also in the works for the two robotics enthusiasts. Among them is the most recent creation, a piece of COVID-19 decontamination equipment that can cleanse surfaces and floors, according to the duo. Africa hasn't been on the radar as a digital powerhouse, but this innovation has propelled Kenya and Africa as a whole ahead. In addition, the invention has shown the continent's technological potential. Such inventors who have yet to be recognized may be inspired by this breakthrough and motivated to design new devices if they are well behaved. With the right financing and project management, entrepreneurs like David Gatu and Moses Kinyua can put Africa on the fast track to become a major innovation powerhouse. Locally created prostheses would also be cheaper, allowing individuals with impairments to enjoy the normal lives that they wish to have. 
We've seen that this is an idea with a lot of potential and the ability to improve many people's lives. As we near the finish of today's video, I hope you've learned all there is to know about this new technology. What did you think of the video? Let us know in the comment section. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, which would be much appreciated. Also, check out the channel for a variety of African development themed videos. Subscribing to the channel and turning on the post notification bell will ensure that you don't miss any future video posts. If you have any recommendation, please leave a comment and share the video. Be safe, till the next video.